Hello everybody, my name is Elizabeth Mulherin Caton. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm one of our counselors here at CAPS. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you a little bit about boundaries. So first, to understand what boundaries are, it's also important to understand what they are not. I think there are a lot of common misconceptions about boundaries where it's like just a statement that you can say to kind of control people or get them to do what you, what you want them to do. And that's not really true. A lot of times boundaries are actually telling people like how we're going to respond to them or what we are going to do if they continue a certain behavior, not a way to control others. So for example, telling somebody like you, like maybe you can't talk to me that way. Yeah, I get what you're saying. You want them to be respectful, but it's gonna be more helpful to set a boundary of sit by saying, if you keep yelling at me, I'm going to leave this conversation. Or I won't continue this conversation with you if you continue to speak with me disrespectfully. Boundaries are also aren't barriers to close relationships. They're not always things that we put up to limit our contact with people or keep them from being close to us. Usually it's the opposite. We want people to know how to make us feel respected, cared for, and comfortable. Again, boundaries aren't just doing whatever you want either. There's a certain like component of assertiveness that's required when setting boundaries in order to do it in a healthy way. And part of assertiveness is a lot of times um, compromising when appropriate. Some of our boundaries are going to be really firm depending on our values and some are going to be more flexible and have room for that. Similarly, they're not permanent or unchangeable. Throughout our lives, our boundaries are going to change based off of our priorities, what we have going on, and just kind of like how our values grow over time. And then lastly, boundaries aren't always saying no. Sometimes boundaries give people the knowledge or like information they need to have helpful conversations with us. So for example, somebody may have a boundary of, I don't continue conversations when people are talking disrespectfully, instead of, I never talk about politics. But then again, other people, like maybe in some relationships, you're okay to talk about politics. And again, that boundary is gonna just depend on where you're at in your life, the other people around you, and the relationships you have with them and your own values. So I want to share this quote from Nedra Glover Talweb. She is the author of the book Set Boundaries Fine Peace, which has an accompanying workbook. And I like how she frames boundaries um, and how she talks about them. She defines them by saying, boundaries are expectations and needs that help you feel safe and comfortable in your relationships. Expectations in relationships help you stay mentally and emotionally well. Learning when to say no and when to say yes is also an essential part of feeling comfortable when interacting with other people. So building off of that definition, there are kind of six common areas where we often see boundaries. So we're going to talk about these different areas and then I'll give some examples. The first is physical boundaries. This would be regarding personal space, physical touch, etc. The next area is sexual boundaries. So that would be content, or excuse me, consent for any type of sexual comments or acts. Intellectual boundaries, your thoughts, ideas, and opinions. Emotional boundaries, when you express emotions for support. Material boundaries relating to your possessions and your stuff. And time boundaries, managing the use of your time. Here are some examples. I'm not a hugger, but we can shake hands or high five it instead. I can't meet for the group project that day. Your comments on my appearance make me uncomfortable. Stop. I'm not emotionally able to help with all you have going on. Do you need help finding mental health support on campus? Now, this one is interesting because it also gives an alternative, right? A lot of times the boundary is kind of the first part of the sentence. Um, I'm not able to help with all you have going on right now. Maybe you have too much going on in your own life. But by offering an alternative, um, it helps you honor your own boundary by not having to kind of emotionally take care of somebody when you're unable to, but also directing them and showing them that you care. Intellectual, let's agree to disagree without getting respectful. And material, I can't loan you, loan you my car this weekend. Healthy boundaries have um, some similar characteristics. So if somebody has healthy boundaries, typically they'll value their own opinions and others' opinions. 
they'll share information appropriately. So not oversharing or undersharing. In other words, not like trauma dumping or completely shutting off. They communicate personal wants and needs assertively. They're not, again, they're not being really bossy telling everybody what to do, though they can be firm if they need to. They accept when others say no to them. So now that we've talked a little bit about just definitions of boundaries and what they are, I'm going to talk about some tips for setting boundaries. And I really want you to think through those different areas of your life that, um, like those six categories, and see which of those things apply to you, where you would want to, what kind of boundaries you would want to set and where you'd want to set them. So here's some possible sentence starters. I want, I need, and I expect. I want to be back on campus by 2 p.m. for class. I need to be done with the group project by Friday. I expect us to communicate in advance when bringing guests up to the room. When you're setting boundaries with people, you really want to make sure you start early. It's a lot easier to set boundaries and have people follow them respectfully when that's all they know. So I would really encourage you to start thinking this through now. And yes, you can change them later, but as you're meeting a bunch of new people, make your boundaries clear. And a lot of times that'll be contagious. As you set boundaries, other people will too. So be open to what other people are expressing as well. You also need to follow through. When you set a boundary, you need to do what you say. For example, if you don't want to work after 5 p.m., then you shouldn't answer work, texts, or emails after 5 p.m. If you do, what it shows other people is that you're not serious about the boundary. And so they're unlikely to respect that boundary going forward. You also need to be clear. Boundaries are statements, they're not questions, and you want to avoid a few confusing language. Saying something like, I don't let people borrow my car, is a lot easier to understand than, I don't usually like other people driving my car. Because the second sentence, there's some clarity about, some room for clarity. People may wonder what circumstances you do like or allow other people to drive your car, rather than just a blanket statement. And then you want to remind people in real time. When somebody crosses or tests your boundary, which people will naturally, especially if you're setting boundaries for the first time in your relationships, you just need to restate the boundary instead of giving in. Um, going off the car example, I know you want to go on the hike, but I don't let people borrow my car. Please find another way to get there. So now that we have had some tips, let's do just a couple of practice um, examples. And I'm gonna show a scenario, and then I'll show kind of a possible response. So if you wanna come up with your own, please make sure that you pause the video. Our first scenario says, your roommate left a mess in the kitchen, and you don't feel like it's your job to clean up after them. You're too busy to clean up anyway. A possible answer might be telling your roommate, please clean the kitchen by the end of the day. I know we're both busy, but it's important to me to keep a clean space. And again, the boundary statement is really the first sentence. Please clean the kitchen by the end of the day. You're telling the roommate exactly what you expect from them. You're saying it politely, and you're giving them an appropriate amount of time to do it. Here's our next scenario. A friend asks to borrow your car. This will be a big inconvenience to you. You might say, no, you can't borrow the car this weekend. Remember, no is a full sentence. As long as you are delivering that no in an aggressive or kind of passive aggressive manipulative way, then you're good to go. That's an assertive sentence in and of itself. Just be kind about it. So now that we've practiced, let's look at some other resources that I really want to encourage you to dive into for your own um, like future learning as you're continuing to think about what your boundaries are and how you're going to set them in your life. The first, there's a podcast called Boundaries.me that you can listen to. Um, I believe it's available on like anywhere you get your podcasts. And then the book Set Boundaries, Find Peace uh, that I referenced earlier and its accompanying workbook by Nedra Glover Taleb. Um, it's a pretty quick read, so it might be good to squeeze in in summer before summer or before fall classes start. And then lastly, there's this free assertiveness workbook, and I apologize for the long link there. But it's kind of like the workbook for Set Boundaries, Find Peace, but it is shorter um, and it's free, so it gives more information about boundaries and gives you some space to kind of, in a guided journal way, work things out for yourself. Lastly, I just want to remind you of our mental health and crisis resources. So as SU students, you have access to us here at CAPS, Counseling and Psychological Services. 
Um, and as long as you are in Washington State, you're eligible for free short-term individual therapy, as well as group therapy and urgent mental health care. So we're open from 8.30 to 4.30 on Monday through Friday and have our urgent care, which is a drop-in first come first serve basis, Monday through Friday from 11 to 1. I've included our contact information, our website, and our office. You're always welcome to stop by and ask questions as well. Lastly, on for like the cap section, I included our Instagram. Uh, we post regular like mental health related and health related content, just tips, tricks, and other things that might be helpful, as well as information about what we're go what our office is doing on campus. And then I have two. Um, crisis resources here as well that are 24 seven that you can always access. The first is Crisis Connections, which is a 24 hour crisis phone line that provides immediate help to people. And they do have a local um, number as well. So it's people kind of in the King County area. Next is the 988 Suicide Crisis Lifeline. This is a 24 hour line available via call, text or online chat in both English and Spanish. Um, they also have a lot more specific resources on their website that I'd encourage you to take a look at. Well, that's all for me today. I hope that you all found this to be a helpful starter to boundaries, and I'm excited to see how our campus grows and welcomes you all this year.